Good evening, everyone. Welcome to our fifth episode on Generic Reptiles YouTube channel. I'm Eric, and today we are going to talk about arboreal snakes. Snakes that live in trees. Venomous snakes that live in trees. So there's tons of different species around the world of venomous snakes that live in trees. And today we're just going to talk about two of them try to keep the video short, sweet, and to the point. But a lot of people have asked me, uh, do I think dragons are real? And um, I do think dragons are real because I happen to own two of them. So without further ado, let's get into some snakes and take a look at some snakes. Our first snake is the most dangerous snake in Africa. It has fangs that are four inches long. It lives atop the treetops and jumps down on anybody that comes across its path. It is the green tree viper. Wait. Babe, you brought me the wrong snake. Oops, my bad. Cut. So today we're going to start with a Theris squamigera, also known as the variable bush viper. Uh, as you can see, this young lady is a, uh, is a bright yellow. Uh, a variable bush viper. Uh, found in Africa, uh, various environments over in Africa, various regions, uh, Congo region, uh, and some of the surrounding, uh, surrounding countries in Africa. Uh, typically found in the bushes, fairly close to the ground. Um, these guys don't make their way up to the tops of trees from, from everything I've read about them and, uh, and what I've seen and how they, uh, how they interact inside their enclosures. Uh, and believe it or not, they do spend a fair amount of time on the ground also. Uh, they are heavily predated on in the trees by birds, obviously. Uh, their size makes them very susceptible to uh, being at the bottom of the food chain. However, their venom packs a pretty, uh, pretty decent punch. Uh, there is no uh, approved anti-venom for these guys yet. Uh, there are some promising anti-venoms out there that people have used uh, in, in the Echis species, just like the Sawscale Viper, uh, and they've used it on squam bites to try to treat the symptoms and there's been some promise with it so but uh, no approved antivenom for these guys so if you do keep these guys in your collection you have to be aware of that uh, they come in a wide variety of colors blacks and yellows and reds and blues and greens uh, just makes some beautiful beautiful display animals um, obviously you're going to find a lot of them wild caught uh, that are imported over here from africa um, Usually the wild-caught ones are going to have some type of scarring on their body. Uh, this young lady is wild-caught. Uh, she was an import, and if you look closely, you can see she does have some scarring in her yellow. Uh, she did come over with some necrosis in her tail, uh, so I had to tube her and take care of her tail when I got her. Uh, but as you can take a look at them and see, uh, it's probably the closest snake besides for a dragon snake uh, that's going to that's gonna resemble a dragon. Uh, if, any of you have, if any of you have watched How to Train Your Dragon Toothless, uh, these guys are a very close spitting image to them with the, uh, with the exception of their keeled scales they have. Uh, their keeled scales come in a couple different varieties as far as looks are concerned. Uh, some of them, their scales uh, sit up close to their body. Uh, some of them they, uh, they actually look like they have spikes on them, and it's uh, very, very, very cool to see. Uh, I have a couple of squams in here. Uh, this young lady is just the most photogenic, and she's the most chill. Uh, she's not trying to snap at everybody and everything that walks by, so it's easier for me to use her in demonstrations. Um, but again, these guys are found in Africa, uh, low level in the trees. They prey on anything that's smaller than them that they can get a hold of, frogs, lizards. Um, you know, in, in captivity, we obviously try to get them on rodents. Uh, you know, big reason for uh, parasites coming over from overseas is obviously lizards carry a lot of parasites, especially wild ones. And uh, when these guys eat them, uh, you know, obviously any, any parasitic food that you get can infect these guys with worms and so on. So... Uh, they eat fairly well. Uh, this one is currently on uh, frozen thawed fuzzies, fuzzy mice. So uh, she's taken to mice very well, as well as most of them do. Uh, when these guys are babies and just born, uh, they're extremely small. And 
Uh, a lot of people don't like hatching them in captivity because, God forbid, you have to force feed them uh, or assist feed them. These snakes are extremely small and extremely squirmy. Uh, and makes, for, makes it for a difficult time, especially for people with big hands. So uh, I have not raised any of my own yet from babies. Uh, the ones I have gotten have been uh, young juveniles that have become adults. Um, there's a lot of experts out there on these guys in the field, uh, especially if you're all on Facebook. Uh, Alexander England, uh, just a great wealth of knowledge when it comes to these guys. Uh, Tommy Spawn, another great wealth of knowledge when it comes to squams. Uh, Greg Madden, I uh, just started talking to him on Facebook. And uh, again, just uh, great people around that have been raising these guys for a long time, uh, a lot longer than I have. But uh, I've learned a lot about these guys keeping them. I uh, learned a lot about their care requirements and keeping them alive. Uh, and, and making sure they're sustainable and live a, uh, live a good life. Um, have had one pass away on me. Uh, was a wild caught. Didn't get a necropsy done, so I'm not quite sure why it passed away. Uh, but I'm going to chalk it off to the fact that it was an import and not all imports make it. Uh, my whole collection did not die of them. So luckily I do keep my snakes in quarantine uh, when they come. So... Uh, didn't have a problem with any other snakes getting infected, but again, just the colors these guys come in is tremendous. You can see this uh, this young lady has not moved, and the shaking is actually my hand shaking, and I'm sorry about that. Uh, it's hard to hold a hook with a snake on the end of it, even though these guys don't weigh anything. It's hard to hold them really, really still, but I'm going to try to get in here and get you guys a little better picture of her, see if, uh, see if our camera will zoom here, and uh, a little bit better. Uh, you can kind of see her scales and how she looks. Uh, you know, beautiful specimen, uh, beautiful Athera squamigera, uh, squam for short, variable bush viper. These guys have like six different names that people call them by. But um, again, uh, one of the arboreal vipers, uh, family Viperidae, um, you know, genus uh, Atheris. Uh, and there are a couple other uh, species of Atheris in there, and I'm going to pull one out in a second that's uh, similar. Uh, shares partial regions with the squam, uh, but it's also found in some higher elevations than the squam is in eastern Africa. So, um, hope you guys enjoyed the squam. And we are going to make our way to Atheris Nitschi, or the Great Lakes Bush Viper. So... Everybody say goodbye to Sadie the Squam. Get one last look at her. Uh, see if I can maneuver this to get some head on, get you guys some better shots here. Um, like I said, she is an amazing girl. Uh, she's very, very easy to work with on the hook for me. She's not very crazy, and uh, she doesn't go striking at the camera and striking at everything in sight. So everybody say hi to her. Yep. Too bad we can't get a close close-up shot. So... All right, let's move on to the Great Lakes Bush Viper. All right, welcome back, everybody. Meet Atheris Nitschi, a.k.a. the Great Lakes Bush Viper. Uh, this one is a little less tame for the camera. Uh, he does like to move around a lot, very squirmy, so I have to be a little more careful with him. Um, a little more nervous, a little more defensive when he's outside. But uh, this guy's made the reptile report a couple times. I'm sure you all have seen him on there that, uh, that follow Facebook. He's got that beautiful black pattern and then black eyes. Uh, I'm trying to get him a good picture uh, on here so you all could see him. But uh, just has that beautiful, beautiful black patterning. There we go. Great picture. Uh, so Atheris Nitschi, uh, very, very close to the Atheris uh, Squamigera. Uh, obviously, same genus, different species. Uh, found on the same continent, uh, found on Africa, uh, but these guys are found in Eastern Africa. Uh, their territory is a little bit, sorry about that, a little bit smaller than the squam. Uh, little different areas, they're found a little bit higher elevations in some areas, these guys, so they are used to a little bit cooler temps in some areas. Uh, but again, these guys are awesome. They have those black looking eyes and the black mask. Uh, not a wide variety of colors like the squams have. Um, this is pretty much the standard Nitschi that you got. Uh, but as you can see, just they got that black mask that's killer. Uh, same prey as Athera Squamigera, and I'm sorry that he keeps moving around, so it makes it hard for me to get him focused on the camera. Uh, same prey. These guys prey on small lizards, um, you know, any, anything that's in the trees that they can eat. Um, 
and uh, and they will spend a little bit of time on the ground as well. Uh, this guy is feeding on rodents right now, so he does take uh, he does take frozen thawed rodents. Most of these Atheris species are meat eaters. I mean, they just they'll chomp whatever food you give them. Uh, but um, you know, obviously, I'm trying to pay attention to the snake and you guys, but my safety comes first, so I'm just making sure that the snake. Uh, is staying where he's supposed to stay and I'm trying to keep him in the frame for you all so you can see him but he's giving you a couple good shots of his face uh, in there you can see that black top he's got on top of him just amazing um, but these guys are great species to keep uh, I wouldn't say they're rare but they are more rare in captivity than the squams are uh, you don't find as many people that have them uh, in captivity or in their collections um, and I don't, I don't really know what to attribute that to. I mean, I know people that, that have them. Uh, I don't know many people that breed them, uh, but obviously I know people that have them in captivity. Um, and like I said, they just, they add another dimension to, uh, to your keeping, um, if you're used to keeping squams. Um, I personally love these guys. Uh, they do seem to grow a little bit larger than squams do. Sorry, I had to get them out of the picture there. Sometimes it takes a double hook to prevent them from coming up, uh, especially when I'm on camera. But uh, they seem to grow a little bit larger than the squams do. Uh, similar body shape, similar uh, similar keeled scales, um, but a little bit longer body, uh, a little bit thicker bodied also uh, than Atheris squamigera. But sorry, I'm just trying to get him in focus so you all can see him again. And he's not working with me very well. But uh, just another beautiful looking dragon, and I'm gonna try to get you guys some still shots as well of him, uh, so you can kind of see what he looks like uh, if you haven't seen his picture before on my website or on our Instagram. Uh, like I said, these guys are avid climbers, so they do not have a problem climbing the hook at all. Um, I always like to keep two hooks out when I'm dealing with these guys, just in case. Um, again, part of the Atheris species, uh, no anti-venom. So you got to be careful when you're handling these guys that you're uh, handling them with proper equipment. Uh, as always, I don't free handle. I know people that do. I know people that have seen free handling their Atheris species. Uh, again, I'm, I don't condone it or not. Uh, that's totally up to the person and how comfortable they feel. Uh, I just choose not to with these guys. Arboreal vipers do tend to be a little bit more defensive than other snakes, uh, as is all arboreal species, uh, venomous or non-venomous, they all tend to be a little bit more defensive than their terrestrial brothers. Um, so, and, and a lot of it's got to do with that, that life up in the trees uh, and, and always having to watch out for birds and any other predators that are up in trees. So uh, I'm sure life for them is very, very, very stressful in the wild. Um, you know, they're able not, not able to just go and hide. So um, get you a couple more pictures of him and then we'll bring out our final guy for you all to take a look at. I'm just seeing if I can get a good shot here. Don't want him to get too close to my hand, but move him off a little bit here. Make sure he doesn't fall off. So let's try to get you one more good shot of him. There we go. In focus, a lot more active than the squams are, as you can see. Uh, this is life in captivity for them also. They are a lot more active in their enclosures than squams are. Uh, most of the time with squamies, you'll see them kind of sitting in the trees, just chilling out, and sometimes they barely move for days. Uh, this guy is always in a different spot in his enclosure, so he does take up a little bit more room than my squams do. Um, but again, beautiful display snake. He's rarely ever hiding. Uh, he's usually out in the open to where I can see him kind of blending in with the trees with camouflage. But I've gotten some great photos of this guy. And, uh, you know, I uh, really enjoy keeping him. So if, uh, if arboreal venomous snakes are on your to-do list, uh, this is definitely a species that you don't want to skip over. So uh, one last time, Atheris nitschi. Great Lakes Bush Viper. Get him in for a close shot right there. It looks like I got a great shot of him for you guys right there on camera. Beautiful, beautiful shot. Hopefully it was in focus because I can only see part of the screen uh, that's up there. So, all right, let's move on to our last contestant today. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Protobothrops, Giordani. And don't ask me to pronounce the third Word of the subspecies, uh, because really I always mess it up every time I do it. So, um, <clears throat> this is a very close cousin to the Jordan's pit viper. This is the red spotted pit viper found in Asia. Um, 
Hunan province uh, near the China area. High elevations, and the reason why I brought this guy out for Arboreal is these guys, not much is known about them, and there's not too much of them, or too many of them, kept in captivity uh, in collections. It's kind of a rare snake to see. Uh, but just like all protobothrops, uh, you know, like the uh, uh, Meng Shen Viper and so on and so forth, uh, these guys are very defensive. Uh, they can be very, very snappy. Uh, they're not a very happy snake to be out. I very rarely take this guy out. Uh, but you could see the patterns he's got and, and so on. But again, not much is known about these guys from reading. Uh, you won't find a lot at all, uh, but some basic information. But uh, these guys are found uh, 2,000 feet and above uh, some of the mountainous areas, uh, excuse me, mountainous areas in China. Um, they can handle some, uh, some pretty low temperatures. Uh, and they seem to thrive a little bit better in below 80 temperatures inside their enclosure. Um, you know, they uh, beautiful coloring, uh, some red spots, this black and white. You can kind of see the mask. Now, this guy does like to strike at the camera, so we're just going to kind of keep him. We're going to keep keep his distance just so he's not striking at it. Um, but I've had this guy on Facebook Live a few times, and uh, he's always struck at the camera, or always struck at the phone. So I'm not going to have him out very long, but I wanted you guys to take a look. Now, these guys aren't fully arboreal. Uh, they do climb a little bit. They do have a prehensile tail. Um, so they are suited for some climbing. Uh, as you can see, I will pull him out, and you can kind of see... Do have a long tail that they can wrap around uh, to climb. Uh, you'll find this guy in the tree every once in a while inside of his enclosure, um, you know, doing his thing. But most of the time they're hiding out, waiting for prey. Um, not a very active snake, very reclusive. Uh, you'll find them hiding a lot and uh, very, very rarely have to feed this guy. This guy's about six or seven years old. Uh, he is captive born and bred, uh, but just a beautiful, beautiful snake that not everybody gets to see inside their collection every day, or uh, I'm sorry, inside YouTube videos or any videos every day. Uh, very, very close composition besides the prehensile tail to your American copperheads. Uh, if you look at the head, uh, very similar head. They are a pit viper, so obviously they have a uh, um, they have heat sensing pits in the front of their head, uh, but very similar head shape to the copper head, that shark looking head, uh, just that, that mean look. And uh, as you can see as he gets closer to the camera, just his head stamp, uh, just an amazing head stamp and pattern on this guy. Um, like I said, this guy's normally out snapping when he's out. Uh, he really hates being outside the enclosure. I'm very careful when I have him out because he is extremely fast. Uh, and he's an extremely agile climber when he wants to be, so just got to be careful. But I uh, wanted to give everybody a, a look at what these guys look at. Again, not too common in, in the trade. You're not going to see a whole ton of them. Um, excuse me, give me one second here. Get him uh, re hook him up. All right, not too common in the trade. Uh, you won't see a whole ton of them. Again, I like rare stuff as well as some of the popular stuff that's out there. So uh, anytime somebody's got something that's really cool and different, I'm always game to, uh, to check them out. So, um, but again, this guy's a red spotted pit viper. Uh, very great eater. Um, eats just as well as all my other venomous snakes. Um, and just very, very, very unique and unique pattern. So... Give you one last look at him. He's starting to get a little antsy, and we'll get him back in his enclosure. Let me see if I can get a little more focus on him here. And uh, looks like we're not going to be able to get him focused. Oh, there we go. Uh, he's just, he's a mover, so he's always on the move when he's out. But we know he wants to go back in, so I'm going to respect his wishes and let him do that. But, all right, guys, I will be right back after I put him back in. All right, guys, I'm back. Um, you know, I have a big love for arboreal snakes. Uh, Jen and I have a ton of them here, uh, both arboreal and semi-arboreal, such as this Irian Jaya carpet python. Um, there's just something about these guys, their sleek bodies and their movements that I've always enjoyed, um, even sometimes better than terrestrial snakes. So I did want to show you all a couple of my venomous ones that I had, and uh, hopefully you all enjoyed them. Uh, we're going to keep non-venomous out of this video for today, but just figured I'd pull this guy out because I haven't had him out in quite a while. So I hope you all enjoyed my video. I hope to see you all next time. Thank you very much. Have an excellent night. Bye-bye.